Okay, showing a little bit here in the dark with the green laser. And I have that set up on a, uh, a little rail here. Now, what happens is that's the green laser through the night vision. And the dot looks a hell of a lot bigger in the night vision than it does to the naked eye. Because basically what the night vision is doing is it's also amplifying all of the splash area around the dot and of course turns that into a much greater uh, dot in the night vision view screen than you might be getting otherwise. Um, the other thing is of course using the iPhone adapter here uh, we can fine tune our focus a little bit on a night vision device but the software in the iPhone is going to interpret the light a certain way so uh, you know that that's why we get a little bit of a washout here in the center of the image and let's see if I can get a little more adjustment on this uh, 14 because when I got two things in my hand it gets a little tricky but uh, where is there we go uh, well, goofy to get this switch, but what we're going to do is we're going to try and turn the sensitivity down. And once I turn the sensitivity down, now I'm making that device that adjustment on the night vision device itself. Um, we're turning the brightness down. That's a difference between, let's say, a 6015 or something with it turned up all the way versus let's dial that down a bit. And what you'll see is we don't lose sharpness. I think that's a 72 line pair two. We don't necessarily lose sharp uh, sharpness, but we're you know we're taking away some of that brightness, so we have a little more to work with. But you can see that dot's still pretty large. Now that dot's also visible to the naked eye, but to the naked eye, it's not quite that large. Now I'm going to switch over to IR. This dot will be not visible to the naked eye at all. But what we're going to get through the night vision here is we get a fairly big dot. So, you know, as far as using that for super high precision aiming up close, that can be a little bit of an issue. Uh, now let's go outside, take a look at this at some distances. Here we are in a relatively common urban environment. Uh, you, Lit by street lamps with uh, cloud cover, no real starlight out there. And what you're going to get is some reflectiveness from the clouds. Okay, that's city glow. Um, in here is, we call that city glow. You're not going to get that out in the woods, but when you're in a city with a lot of car headlights, artificial lights, stuff like that, you, you get... Um, the city glow off the uh, the bottoms of the clouds and you can usually spot that from a distance too um, an interesting uh, low slung cloud formation okay so I'm gonna look down here at the IR laser now what you can tell is that when we were indoors that laser dot was looking kind of large because the night vision is sensitive to the splash area around the dot here, um, let's see here, that's about 25 yards right there. Where I are, this is not visible light, so nobody sees this. Nobody, nobody on this street knows that we're flashing a laser around. Now, let's take a look over here. And what you can see is that an area around artificial light with the street lights, we're going to lose our dot. You see what's going on here? We're losing the dot around a lot of artificial light um, over here there is just some oddball reflectivity off of those trees uh, because they're wet okay so this is part of the lesson and learning this stuff uh, because those trees are wet they're replacing the re reflecting that street lamp so we're looking at our IR laser dot here and we can pretty well see it in the darkness um, we can see it reasonably well around that car. We can see it around that car, but again, if we get into these light splash areas, we're going to lose our dot. Okay, we're going to lose our dot in these light splash areas. 
so you can learn about how the limitations are going to be. Uh, I'm using the PVS-14, it's about a 2005-2006, no I'd say it's about a 2005 production model. Um, I'm using a relatively current IR laser here. This is an unoccupied house, nobody's there. So again, they're not going to see that laser dot going in their house because it's IR only. Um, here in this somewhat little wooded park-like area, um, we can see our dot getting out there at 75, 80, 100 yards. Um, as I go down the street, we've got too much light splash down there so we're gonna lose our dot down in the street but in the darkened areas okay um, see that tree out there okay in that tree we're, we're there um, 75 80 yards let's look at uh, uh, an area with uh, you know where, where we could do a little more distance um, let's say down here uh, let's see, we're going to take our dot, and this is kind of a common way to aim lasers at a distance is you, you ground your dot and you trace it out to the distance, okay? You ground your dot, you trace it out to the distance. Now that's one of the ways if somebody's trying to spot somebody using a laser, you know, that's the way a lot of guys work this stuff is you ground your dot and you trace it out to the distance and aim in. Over here, if we try to ground our dot and trace it out to the distance, we've got it out there at 100 yards, but realize in that environment, um, I, I don't think we have precision at that distance. The other thing is that you've got target recognition versus target discrimination at distances. So whenever somebody's saying, well, hey, I want to aim at 100 yards. I want to aim at 200 yards. I want to be a, a laser sniper at night in an urban environment. Um, there's no way you're going to do friend to foe identification at those distances. Not at a full block. Okay, not at a full block away. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So, when we're using an IR laser at these types of distances, you know, 25, 30, 50 yards, that's that's a little bit more realistic. You know, somewhere in this type of environment, we're going to have fewer rounds on target to search a target if we're in a tactical situation, if we're trying to clear an area. Again, the IR laser is going to have absolutely no intimidation value because nobody sees it. But I would know, let's say, if this were mounted on a weapon, I would know that I'm slicing the pie on this building, okay? I would know that I'm, I'm up, I'm, I'm slicing the pie on this little building here, and, uh, and, and that's how it goes. Now, I could switch over to the visible laser, and it doesn't look a lot different to you guys in the camera, but to me, I just went from invisible to visible. But Again, we're looking at what our options are of aiming something in the dark. And there's not a lot of options out there. Uh, you, you can co-witness a night vision device with an aim point or an ACOG uh, to some degree. I, I haven't been able to get it to work very well with an ACOG. Uh, there are guys who do that with a um, EOTech. You know, you can have a night vision setting on an EOTech and co-witness. But then you have to hold your weapon up to your face just to look around. And that's where you can start losing functionality of your whole night vision system. Um, because traditionally with the PVS-14, you're going to have over one eye, the other eye's bare. And then if we want to aim, if we want to be discreet in an urban environment, um, we want to be able to use that laser without without alarming everybody. But again, if you're using it, let's say in this type of environment, and there's a lit window, and that is not a brightly lit window, you're, you're not going to be able to aim at those types of lights. Um, so hopefully this has been a little bit educational with this. We're, we're testing one of the Chinese-made D-Bell style lasers here. 
yeah, it's uh, turning out to do what it's supposed to do, especially within its price range, typically under $150. And of course, I'm using the the Canis Latrans um, night vision adapter for the iPhone, and uh, those are all available on eBay right now um, for under $50, I believe, $48 on eBay. So we'll do a couple more videos tonight since I slept in the afternoon and I'm up late.